Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. And this is the end of what will wind up being the kind of the first part of this mini series on building applications with XAML and .NET MAUI. And I say the end of the first part because we're really focusing on the XAML. Um, we, what we've tried to do in this series is give you guys a good overview of how XAML works and then how you build an actual application. And I think we've covered an awful lot. Paul, you've done an amazingly great job. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching. One thing that we haven't, and we're not going to get around to talking about right now, is actually deploying. So we've built the app. We did at one point look at an Android emulator. We've uh, seen a lot of things running on Windows. And the best acts, the best way to, to develop an app is to run it on Windows, because then you don't have to worry about it emulators. You don't have to worry about actual devices, but it is multi-application UI. And so if we only did Windows, then we're kind of leaving out all the rest of it. So we will return after this at some point in the near future, I promise. And we will talk about deploying. We'll see how you use emulators. We'll see how you get this application on actual Android and iOS devices. Um, we'll do that later. So we're going to finish up this part of this, um, and we're going to look at how to go from lists to detail views. So in the previous episode, we saw how to display users and products. Now we're going to see how to work with individual ones. So take it away. All right. And, you know, even though we haven't shown deploying on the Android or, you know, to an iPhone or anything, we have talked a lot about the design considerations, the UI considerations you should be thinking about to make sure that they will work on those devices. And I think if you follow that guidance, it will look pretty good. So, yeah. all right. So if you think about it, right, we have our user list view that has the list. And remember I added an edit button here. What I'd like to do is be able to click on that edit button and then have it take us to the user detail view that we've been showing you as well. Mm -hmm. So that's our goal. So what we have to do is we have to be able to pass, you know, like the primary key from the list to the detail. And we do that by going into the code behind. And we're going to add a little attribute up here called query property. So query property. And as you can see here, it just says, says give me the name of some property, which I haven't added yet. And mm -hmm. then some sort of, you know, kind of a, a moniker that we're going to use to be able to pass the data. And you'll see that in just a second. So I'm going to add a public int user ID here. And that then now matches up with the one in the name of. Cool. So those two have resolved themselves. All right. And then if you remember, we had hard coded down here a one or a three. Now, instead, we're going to use that user ID. And so if we do everything right, we should be able to click on any item in the list and be able to pass its user ID from the list to this user detail view. Right. So let's go ahead and open up our user, get over there, there we go, view model commands. Okay. And we're going to add a method called edit async. So we are going to be doing things asynchronously. You know, that's kind of all the rage that you should be doing these days. Yeah. So I've done a protected async task, edit async, to which I'm going to pass an ID. And I'm going to await shell.current.go to async. Now, we saw this before, okay, where we passed in the name of, you know, a string and then the type of. But what we're doing now is I'm going to pass in the user detail view, all right? So we get that name. And then, just like you would do on a URL line in a browser, you're going to do a question mark and an ID equals, and then the ID that we passed in. So this guy here, this needs to match up with this second parameter right here. So if I name this user ID, then back here, this has to be user ID. Mm -hmm. So there we go. So pretty simple. Let's go ahead and put it back the way it was. I, I prefer just keeping it real simple. And then we have this edit async method here in our command. 
So what we need now is what? We need actually another command. So we'll add a public I command edit command. And remember, it's just a get with a private set. And then in our init, which is run from the constructor, we're going to connect this all up. So we're going to do edit command equals new command. Now we're going to expect an int to be passed in. So I'm going to have to use a, the generic of this command now. Asynchronously, let's pass in the ID and then await edit async. All right, that's pretty simple, right? Not, not too, I mean, it's typical C-sharp code. Yeah. All right. Now let's open up our user list view.xaml because I'm going to add a name to the actual page here. Yeah, user list page. So we're going to call it. So I'm naming the whole content page here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need to be able to connect up this edit button that's way down buried in here. And I'm going to do it like this. Let me show you. So what I'm doing is I'm saying the command parameter. All right, I need a parameter. I need, and it's the user ID that's coming from what? Our user. Okay, so that's the command parameter. The command is saying binding to the source is the whole page, and the path is the binding context dot edit command. Remember, the binding context is actually what? This view model, isn't it? Right. So by having that, oops, sorry, let's go back here now. Okay, by saying the path is actually binding to the binding context dot edit command on this page. That's how we say the command is going to execute this guy right here, which is then this edit command. And so it's going to be right here. So let's set a breakpoint right down here on this edit async, because that's going to get called when we click on that button. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So we run this. And once it comes up, we're going to go ahead and click on that users list again. We'll get the list and we'll then click on any one of these. It's going to pass that parameter then. Okay, so if we go to the, let's go to the second one here. And if we look at the ID, this got passed in by that command parameter. So it's number two. So it's then going to do go asynchronously, pass that. And if we set a breakpoint over here, right here, okay, uh, let's, let's put it right here. Okay, we can now check the user ID. There it is, number two. Yep. So now we call our viewmodel.get passing in number two, and it displays the data. Excellent. Not neat. So now we go back. Let's choose another one. Let's go way down here. And okay, same thing. We get a different ID. So number nine. And we continue on. And there it is. There's his data. Perfect. Isn't it easy? Yeah. Very little code when you really think about it, right? Yep. Okay. Now let's go back and fix one more thing up. So if you remember, uh, we have the user detail view. Let's go all the way down here. We have the save button, right? And we're gonna call on that save command, mm -hmm. okay? But what we really wanna do is save, call the save method, and then what? We wanna return back to the list after that data gets saved, don't we? Yes. Okay. So let's now go over here and onto our command, user view model commands class, we're gonna add this save async. And you can see I'm gonna make the call to the to the view model, right? Base.save. Okay. And then we will, if everything comes back, if the saver says yes, everything's been saved, we will now say go to async, passing in dot dot, which means go back one level. It's the same as clicking on that back uh, little back arrow that appears in the upper left-hand corner. Mm -hmm. So since we're, we now want to call this, we now need to change this up here, don't we? So we need to add the async here, and then we do await on save async. All right, everything else stays the same, but now we're now just going to call this. And okay, we're going to call this guy right here. So make sure that our save button is enabled. It is. That's great. Let's then go down here to our view model, user view model, find the save. Because remember, I put a break in here. I don't want to do that. Okay. But right here, you see my little to do. 
write code to save the data. So that's where you'd write code and go out, save the data. You'd probably do some validation or something first. Okay. But let's say all of that's working. You know, I'm just trying to give you the idea of how this will work. You can work out the details for actually doing the saving yourself. But we want to see it actually do the save and then return back to the list. So let's come in here, click on this guy. Let's say we made a bunch of changes. And remember, nothing's getting saved, but when I hit save, boom, right back. Right. Okay. Hit save, right back. Cool. Really neat, right? I mean, and it's you think about how little code we had to write to get that to work. That's pretty easy. Okay. All right, let's do one more. Let's go into our product detail view here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, instead of fixing all this up, I've actually got it already created. And don't worry, I've got all this whole sample done for you. Okay, so I'm gonna just drop in the data type, the product view model commands and all of that. I'm gonna change the code behind the product detail view here. So I'm doing the same thing. I've got this query property up here and the name of product ID. So it's going to point to this guy. ID is the you know little moniker that we're using on the URL line, if you will. And then we got the on appearing and then we're going to go to that product ID. So let's go into our product view model commands now. And after our constructors, let's add the two commands mm -hmm. Add our private variable for is save command enabled. Okay. And then we'll add our public property is save command enabled. We'll add our init, which actually then creates our save command and our edit command. And it's gonna call the save and the edit async. So we need those two methods to come in as well, like so. So as you can see again, the design pattern is exactly the same, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to keep it as simple as we can, as, as, as consistent as we can, where we're doing the save and we're doing the edit. Okay, the view model is being used on both the list and the detail view, right? Okay, but we use different commands on the different pages. But one place, we write the code in one place. All right, now let's open up our product list view and make this happen. So if you remember what we had to do before, we had to add a name so that our edit button can then reference that name. We come down here to the edit button. We add our command parameter, which is the product ID. So each time through this loop, as it's, as it's building these buttons and all the price and the color and all of that, it's binding the product ID to this command parameter. And then the command is gonna call the binding context dot edit command. Now, I don't know if you remember, but a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> in the app shell, remember when we deleted from the shell, we deleted the user detail and we replaced it with user list view, we had to yep. register. We need to do the same thing here as well because we deleted the product detail view. So we need to register it so that it's in, in our little routing table, okay? And then let's go down to our product view model here. And in our save, there's this, you know, throw here. We don't want that. Really what we want to do is return it true and have our little to-do. So it reminds us that we need to write the code to save the data. All right. So, whew, a lot of stuff, but really neat because it's the same design pattern over and over again. So let's run this. And if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to go in just like we did on the users, we should be able to go into each product, click on the edit, see the detail appear, hit the save. Okay, we can bring this full screen if we want. And we could either go back this way, or we can go back by clicking on the save button. Either way works. Very nice. Pretty easy to get this navigation working, right? It's all about these different attributes. Um, yep. and adding that query property and then using the go to async and getting all this to, to basically just flow from one page to the other. But I think you'll see these, these view models are pretty simple code and they're yep. very repeatable code. And that's, that's the key, isn't it? Yep. And then of course, if you want to 
work with real live data. You just go into your view model classes and add code to talk to real data. Well, you add code in the repository that the view model yeah. calls. Yep. The repository is the guy. He's the one who takes care of the data. Part. Right, right, right. Uh, the right. view model is kind of setting it up so it displays right. on the screen incorrectly. <laughs> yes. And then because we're using dependency injection, we can swap out the repositories in one place. Right. Cool. Exactly. All right. So what we've seen in this series is how to start from scratch, learn XAML, We've seen an awful lot of UI stuff. We've seen uh, where code goes, whether it's XAML or code behind. We've minimized our code behind by using the view models and the repositories. We've seen quite a bit of stuff. So thank you very, very much, Paul, for showing this to us. Absolutely. And My pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone, for sticking with us. Um, people have questions, they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, P. Yeah, Sheriff right. at pdsa.com. I'm sure we'll put that in the link somewhere. Yep. And then we will, again, relatively shortly, come back and show how to get this app onto real devices. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Mm -hmm.